but I mean, you clearly said you came this year with the idea that you wanted to do that more and do it better. Um, you had two straight games with multiple people hitting, four people hitting multiple threes. That's never happened before in the franchise history. Can you just talk about what kind of change in philosophy that you brought offensively to this this year? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's you know obviously the, the game trending that way. I think for. The last few years. Last time we did it well was 2020. We had a team that really spread out, um, and we made a lot of threes. And, um, at, at, that was the last team that did it. Uh, and then just personnel-wise, you know, where we got to wasn't necessarily that strength. Uh, and then we just we got to a space where, you know, when it's, it's we call them scars. When you have scars, like 42. you know, scars. you're scarred by your inability oh, to right, shoot. Right. You know, where you're like, it just, it just prompts you to, you know, not want to go through that again. Um, and so we just, you know, I think sometimes it's just availability for players, um, you know, timing, right? And so uh, we had other needs as well. And they just happened to be able to, like, so whether it was Heidemann or whether it was Land, um, they did more than shoot the three. So it wasn't just a one-dimensional. Um, it was they do this and they, you know, shoot the three, which is which is um, obviously 41. knocking out two things, improving defensively. Um, being able to take and make more threes. Just for overall uh, movement, um, space in the lane. 40. You know, because both land and fee are very good in there. Um, so I think th that was sort of our mindset. There are so many people who are at least a threat from there, too. Yeah. yeah. And you can do so many different things in terms of you know, reacting to what a defense yeah. gives you, right? Yeah, you got to make a choice. I think that's probably the biggest thing is I don't want to play against those kind of teams where you have to make a choice, do you give up that three or do you give up that two, um, you know, to, to good players. And so, uh, you know, we'll, hopefully we'll be good at reading what choice is being made uh, so that we can, uh, you know, take advantage of, of those decisions. Uh, in a kind of chicken and egg question, are you shooting so well because you're moving the ball or are you move or, or, or you know, is it the other way around? I mean, are you, I hope it's our movement. Your assist up just because yeah. you're making shots. I hope it's our movement. We've always been a good assist team. Um, you know, this, this team is, you know, um, it resembles more closely. You know, I look over the last four or five years, I think that's been a big part of it. This might be the best team in terms of moving, sharing, making the extra quicker. I think their recognition of that, um, their selflessness has been really good. Um, you know, it's rarely a sticky situation where they're just, you know, not, not making any decision. Uh, I think that our cutting and our seeking the paint is a part of success at the three-point line as well. well yeah, now you're facing the most efficient defensive team in the league. It's kind of an interesting matchup. Uh, the most the, the, efficient the best, the best defensive team. Oh, I offense. Think they have the best, no, I think they have the best defensive. Well, I don't think that's what Becky no, would tell you. I meant yeah. the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> you have the best offense. Uh, Defensive we have the best defense. We have the best, best offensive yeah. rating. I mean, how we does got that there. matchup usually go? Uh, well, the defense always wins, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I always go back to the NFL when I bet on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the year that they had this incredible, incredible defense, and I thought, now offense, offense will win that. Defense always wins. Mm -hmm. Let's hope that's true tomorrow. Coach, what have you noticed from just the off-the-court chemistry from this group? You know, it's one thing to deliver really well on the court, but it seems like this group just gets along really well off the court as well. Yeah. I mean, we always have. I think that's. You know, the by and large, that they enjoy each other. Um, obviously, it makes it easier to get through difficult times when you when you have that as a as a base. And this group is really good, really good people. Um, seem to enjoy each other, like you said, away from it. And that's that's a bonus. We don't necessarily orchestrate that in any way. Um, that's their quality of life away from here. Uh, it makes me happy if you think that that's um, something that they enjoy. Um, whether we're birthday parties for Mila or George or, you know, um, they don't mind seeing the coaches, you know, when we go to those things. So it's, it's always, it's always a plus. Any update on Diamond? Uh, no update on Diamond. Um, Diamond uh, will have an appointment tomorrow. Um, that were um, some, some decisions. I think I mentioned that Kent in the pregame, um, you know, a consult and, you know, a path. For, for her, so we'll know more tomorrow. Just what's kind of the adjustment for your, for the team playing with, without her on the court? Well, the adjustment is we have two other small forwards um, that are that are coming in and, and, and taking those minutes and trying to hold the fort down for Diamond. Um, one of your favorite players hasn't yet played this year in Chelsea. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. And you'd think that would, you know, slow him down, but those two, Jackie and Plum, have really played well. Sure you have, yeah. about the challenges. I mean, when you got that plus Asia, that backcourt plus Asia, yeah. how, how do you attack that defensively? Uh, you know, it's it's you can try a lot of different things, and you know, we have along the way. We've tried different things uh, with each player. Um, sometimes it's matchups, and I think what we're going to have to do is understand our defense is really good and play our defense, and let's not overthink things. And if they beat us at what we're doing defensively, then then you carry on. But um, it's a lot of points for those three players. You know, it's 25 for Asia, right? And, right. 21. It's just like virtually, you know, three 20 point scores on a team, which is yeah, ridiculous. It's insane. Isn't it? You know, um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. With all the new players, do you think it would kind of succeed this fast, just five games in? Uh, I don't necessarily know that we ever feel one way or the other about that. I think what we just, we lock in what we're doing in training camp, and, and we did feel good about the training camp we had. You just don't ever know whether it's going to translate into, into wins or losses. Um, you can point to training camp and go, oh, yeah, it makes sense, you know, that we got off to a good start. Um, but there's just so, I mean, it's five games and you, mm -hmm. you know, you'll play the, play the season in five game segments typically. So, mm -hmm. you know, that the, the next five are up and let's see, let's see if we can uh, continue to be a really good team. You, like you said, I mean, it's only five games in mm -hmm. and it's hard to draw any conclusions from what's mm -hmm. going on there, but just in, in terms of kind of getting a sense of what kind of metal this team has kind of yeah. back for them. Yeah. You know, they go to Connecticut and I think played pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. Won in back-to-back -back games, beat a New York team that was very highly regarded. I mean, mm -hmm. are you getting a sense of the way this team can match a big moment? Yeah. I mean, I think that's the you know, thing that came through this is you don't know how quickly you're going to get that. Uh, I loved being in the overtime games early in the season. Um, don't love missing free throws, you know, that sort of thing. But you want to be battle tested. You want to experience those difficult moments and see how your group handles it. Um, it helps us as coaches kind of figure out the errors that we made in terms of maybe a matchup or maybe where we put somebody in a, in a scheme. It helps us learn, you know, the team faster. Uh, so through five games, I think we have a much better idea of when we need a basket. You know, what does that look like mm -hmm. uh, for each role, you know, and what side of the floor, whether it's a pitch out or whether it's a dribble off, you know, and those sort of things. So a lot of really valuable yeah. lessons through the first five games. Even responding three out of four nights. Yeah, yeah, that was great. I mean, everybody's, every, every schedule is going to have that, you know, those, those crazy, um, crazy stretches. So we can't even talk about that as a factor. That just is. Um, and, and, yeah, we handled it, which was, which was good. Uh, Cheryl with Atlanta, what have you learned about her having her, I mean, you obviously you signed her for a reason, but having her in-house, what have you learned about her as a basketball player that maybe you didn't know previously? Well, you don't know until you're in the trenches. You, you know what you see, um, but when, when you have someone on the floor that is from the first day of training camp, that when someone asked me, you know, how Lamb was doing, and I told Lamb this when we first sat down to talk um, at uh, George's party, I think it was, because uh, we really hadn't talked much, and, and I just wanted to see how she was doing, and, and I told her, I said, somebody asked me, you know, how you were making out, and um, I told them that I said, I don't worry about what she's doing, and that, that confidence, the trust, the first day, that literally the movements that she makes on the court all make sense to me. Rarely am I going, ah, she's in the way. What is she doing? Um, she gets in and out of stuff quickly. Her decision making both offensively and defense. She's just a high IQ player. Um, we watched her a lot in college. We were prepared to take her. Mm. So we felt like we knew a lot about her, but you really don't know the magnitude of those little areas that you think you might know, what it really means to your team. Uh, and the synergy that you um, that you can quickly get with a player like that. Her and Fee think the game so similarly. Um, and so that's, that's uh, pretty helpful. I think a big reason for her three-point percentage is her passes to her have been amazing. I thought all the passing up yeah. to the perimeter. Can you speak to just, it's simple, but for me, just it's always in the pocket, and I think that's why the shooting's also been so good. Yeah, we, I, I, our pick-and-roll decision-making has been good. We spent a lot of time on it. Um, Courtney's exceptional. Courtney's exceptional. Her synergy with, with Lan, having played with her in Chicago, I think really helpful. Um, so Courtney's timing, you know, it looks like maybe something's not there, and then boom, it still is. She finds a way, it finds a window. Um, you know, that's like you said, it's putting, put, putting pressure and collapsing. And then if not, we're really good at playing behind uh, a pick and roll and, 
you know, I've actually been complaining about our, our, our attention to detail and our passing. And um, if you look at the number of times, and hopefully we're getting better, that we'll pull somebody off of a good spot because the, the pass was, you know, too far, that not just kind of careless. And, and that's usually the start of play. Um, and we don't want to be disjointed. Um, but I think in terms of the extra passing, after we play behind a pick and roll, those, the timing, uh, on time, on target, I think pretty good. Okay. Lastly, Courtney, I think about 70% of her shots coming from the mid range. She's making them at 50%. Yeah. Does she kind of have a free pass in a shot that's kind of going out of style in the modern basketball you era? You know it. <laughs> you know it. And I told her, you know, we, we had this, because she's, she's pretty funny. She, she uh, asks a bunch of questions, always wants to know information. Um, and so we shared with her, uh, you know, that's great. You know, shooting north of 50%, but 50% on twos, what's the expected point value on that? And I believe she's shooting close to 35, 38, 40. She was at 40% from three. So we said, expected point value from your three is actually higher, but you keep doing you. You know, and she's like, wait, what? You know, like, hey, but but you keep doing you. You know, I mean, just make the shot. You, you know, I'm not going to get too picky. Built the dynasty on the mid range. That was at a time when the three ball wasn't, wasn't as big. <laughs> yeah. I remember being concerned in 2016 because LA started shooting the three. <laughs> Were we going to make enough twos? Um, but yeah, we, we made a living doing you, that. You know, you talk about playing the game in segments. I think everybody kind of approaches it that way. And this is the kind of part of the season where people start adjusting what they're doing against Absolutely. you because they've seen five games of your film. That's right. So I would imagine that they're not going to say, well, let's just leave Alana Smith alone yeah. on the perimeter. Yeah, so more. what happens when she starts drawing switches? Well, her and, passing game, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's other things she can do. Um, you know, she's good in the paint as well, and we've talked about that, like, when Fee comes out of the game, you know, when we have Dork and Lan, um, Lan is, is, she's got her craftiness on, let's say there's a switch and she's got a small on her, I'm confident in her decision making, I'm confident in her, you know, the, we got the defense collapsed off of that coverage, her decision making to pass it out mm -hmm. to a shooter, so. Um, yeah, there's, absolutely, there's that, you know, when we start, you know, getting the, the teams, uh, you know, scheming for what we're doing, can we have a reaction to that in a positive way? And hopefully we will. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh -huh.